nothing left before we start. So let us let us be quiet till Bobby starts, so I can get the show. We get the okay. show on the road. All right, all right. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Mic sounds good. You ready to go? <clears throat> All right, here we go. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Upscale Love for You. This is your host, your favorite first cousin, Bobby G. And hey, we got another great show lined up for you today. Hey, Miss Millie, how are you? Huh, I'm here. I'm good. All right, you just stopped my introduction because you came on and you just smiling and waving. So forgive me, everyone in, in Upscale Love world, but Miss Millie just came on looking extra special tonight. So like I was saying, this is your favorite first cousin, Bobby G. And hey, we have a great show lined up for you tonight. And we want to th take this time to thank everyone for the text messages and the emails and the phone calls asking the question, what is Upscale Love for you? Let me tell you what it's all about. Upscale Love for you is formatted to entertain, educate, and facilitate self-help, self-love, and everything you want or wish to know about love, relationships, dating, marriage, et cetera. Upscale Love for you often uncovers hot topics and sensitive issues from tales of singledom, to parenting struggles, and everything in between. So whether you're actively seeking direction or looking for ways just to pass the time or you just want to have a really good conversation, Upscale Love for You is here. And now with that being said, I would like to take this time to introduce the people that has made this possible, that keeps this moving forward. The one, the only, the wonderful, the wonderful, the wonderful, Dr. Marielle Bacon. Dr. Fabulous, how are you this afternoon? This I evening? am, listen, 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 everyone. I am feeling fabulous. I say that, still in a little pain, 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 but I know it's going to get better. And until then, I have to perpetrate a fraud, but I'm going to put on that smile and be ready to enjoy Upscale Love for you. All, All right. right. And I'm going to turn this back over to First Cousin. All right, Dr. Fellas. Well, again, we're going to wish you a speedy recovery. I know you got some things going on with your foot there, but you know what? Rub some Epsom salt and some hot water on it and wrap it in a brown towel. You'll be good to go. You'll be playing kickball uh, Monday morning. Well, why brown? Why it, it's got to be brown? Ain't nothing like chocolate. Well, you get a you, know, you get one of them towels from the hotel. You know, you take two little bits of home. You can wrap it up in that. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> okay. My All bathroom right. got a ton of them hotel towels right now. Oops, oh, I'm sorry. I got did one I more say thing that? to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. You know I do. But anywho, I forgot to say, everyone, my birthday is March 28th. I am celebrating every day in the month of March. So I want you to know, look for that little nugget every day on Facebook to tell you exactly how I'm doing. And I did absolutely wonderful today. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. All it. right. And next, my main man, my brother from another mother with the voice just like no other, Dr. Feelgood. Come on and talk to us. Hey, ladies and gents, it's Dr. Feelgood, the man with the golden voice, the ladies' choice, and of course, it's Rose and Rolls Royce coming back at you every Thursday to do it my way. And if it's not my way, it's the highway. I hope that y'all looking good and feeling good and smelling good. I know my brother Razzle Dazzle over there, his show's tomorrow night, by the way, as we're, yeah. doing our, we're doing our thing. You know, we're doing big things over here. I, I, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna say like Doctor, like like rather rather. We do big things over here. <laughs> we do big things. Ooh, child. Yeah, we got it go. We got it going on. I want y'all to be. You know, it's going to be the. It's going to be the upscale for you network. Because we like the Wu Tang Clan. You know, we individuals. We got our own thing, but we all come together and form like Voltron. So I want y'all to be careful and know that. First man to hit the solo. He like method man of the plan. His name is cousin, the first cousin Bobby G. And he has Bobby G's break room. So check him out Monday nights, zero at 8 30 p.m. He comes on, he does his thing. And then we have the fabulous. Her name is so nice, you gotta say it twice. The fabulous, fabulous, amazing lady, first lady of upscale love for you. She's a co-host of scorebiggerdating.com, which comes on Fridays at 8.30. Be sure you hit it up, because she always, and, and of course, the co-host is Mr. Malik, the Razzle Dazzle Man. And coming soon to a podcast with you, 
your favorite jokester, the man that's no that no up look like no other, that got a that's got a nice sisters and a cool ass brother. Hey, it's me, Dr. Feel Good. I'm coming up with Feel Good Pharmacy, giving you that good old fashioned home feeling and healing that you need to get your day right. Coming soon to a podcast near you. Now back to you first, Cuz. All, all right, right. Dr. Feel Good. All right, all right, all right. Well, we want to thank everyone for coming out and joining us tonight. And we were definitely excited to have a great show. First, we got a couple of housekeeping notes. First, we want to ask if um, if there's a question that you want to respond to, or if you have a question, we ask that you look at your, your toolbar at the bottom and under reactions and just hit the, uh, the sign where you raise your hand so we can call on you. We want to acknowledge everyone if you have a question or comment that you want to make. Second, we want to make sure this is a family friendly show. So we're going to ask that we watch our profanity. We want to watch out. Miss Miller, you can keep drinking because we don't know what's in your cup, but we just- That's right. <laughs> We just gonna ask that we keep it clean with the with the profanity, and we just gonna make sure you continue to stay tuned in to Upscale Love for you. Also, we can be found on YouTube. That's Upscale Love, the number four, the letter U. Upscale Love for you. It's all one word. It goes on YouTube. So hit that like button and make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can see the shows we've had in the past and the shows we're gonna have in the future. <laughs> now, with that being said, we want to go ahead and get started on the topic of the day, and it's about relationships. And we just want to know what makes a relationship work. That's the topic topic of the day. And so my number one question is this, what makes a relationship really work? My parents been married 40, 44 years, 44 years. And I've seen the ups, I've seen the downs, I've seen the ins and the outs. And I've asked them time and time, what's the secret to keeping longevity in a marriage? You waking up to the same person every day for 40 some years. That's, that's hey, that's gotta be love. So. They gave me their response, but Dr. Fabulous, I want to ask you, what makes a relationship work? Well, when I was married, like I said, my husband is deceased, but we brought it on strong for 23 years and we, ooh, we honeymooned all 23 years. Mm. It was nothing like a beautiful marriage. And I'm going to say what kept us strong was communication and compromise. Cause if you mm. can deal with me, ooh, baby, you got to be that special, special kind of man. And so he knew how to compromise and I knew how to compromise and we just made that thing work like butter, like peanut butter and jelly. Mm. Mm. All right, all right. You know all how right. peanut butter and jelly is with a glass of cold milk. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. satisfying, satisfying. Mm. All right, 23 years. Wow, that's a long time. 23. Praise God for that. Dr. Feelgood, come on, tell us what makes a relationship work in your opinion? The ability to relate. If you don't, if you're not growing, if you're not growing together, you're growing apart. So you always got to be matching with your energy with whoever you want to be around. You know, for example, you want to be together with somebody, but they want to do their own thing. If they doing that, then y'all ain't going to work because Y'all doing your own thing. Now, now, it's always good to have different interests outside each other, but you got to be working towards that common goal. If mm -hmm. I like to spend and she like to save, it ain't going to work because we're going to always be broke and arguing over what's, what's who's broke. But we got to know that whatever we do, we got to set a goal mm -hmm. and we got to work towards it together. That is the secret. It's not love. It's not duty. It's a combination. Mm. You, you have to understand that it's about us. It's not we. Nosotros means us in Spanish. So you okay. have to think of us, not me. There ain't no I in team, but there is you and Suck. Now back to you first, cuz. All right. Well, Dr. Fielder, let me ask this question then. What's the longest relationship you have been in personally? Don't put him on the spot. Don't put him on the spot. <laughs> it's a simple, I think I think some of the people want to know. Hell, I want to know. What's the longest relationship? It could be two years, three years. You two counting weeks. on your fingers feel good. And his toes look like. That's what he was doing. <laughs> and, I and, calculator out. Hey, and I have my advocates out there too. Like, hmm, carry the two, do the three. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. We waiting. He's trying to get out the question, Bobby. Hey, look. look at it. 
What's the longest relationship you've been in? I'd say 20 something years. Okay. All right. All right. Mm. All right. All well, right. Miss Millie, how are you, darling? I'm good. I'm I'm right. good. I had a had a long day, but I'm good. You had a long day. Well, I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, Miss Millie. I'm loving. Is that a hunter green sweater you wear? Is that hunter green? It's a shirt with like the little turtleneck piece connected. They are very comfortable, stretchy. Yeah. I love them. Yeah, I love the look, especially with the long earrings. You're working it tonight. Thank you. You're work, you working it tonight. Now, come on, tell me what makes a relationship work. When two people are putting all they got into it, you got to be willing to compromise, and communication is key. If you're not communication, you're all, um, in great communication, you're already lost. And it takes give and take. Mm -hmm. And you have to be willing to compromise, as I heard already. Without compromising in it, you're not going to be able to make it. And I did have learned this. Somebody bring it to my attention, but I always say it. Even when you are super busy, you make time for what's important. There huh. you go. All right. Even when you are super busy. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, it seems like everyone has to work, the male and the female, the husband and the wife, the girlfriend, mm -hmm. the boyfriend, and we all have busy lives because everything is so expensive and you want to have nice things, mm -hmm. so everybody has to work. So how do you find time if everybody's busy all the time? You you have to make time. We scared, we've set a long plot to go to work. We fill in the calendar to do whatever we have to do. Fill in mm -hmm. the calendar for date night. Make Thursday night date night, regardless of what, wherever you're at. Not you Thursday night, Millie. Not, not Thursday night. No, no, no. Make not Thursday Friday night, Millie. No. <laughs> no, Tuesday. You can do Tuesday night. Ain't that no TV Tuesday that's night. That's right. That's yeah. right. Oh, God. I can't with y'all. That's <laughs> right. Not that a Thursday night. <laughs> not Thursday. Okay. Unless okay. they date not that night. Not Thursday night. Day night. That mm -hmm. work around okay. your busy schedule and make it all work because okay. you have to have time together. And okay. as busy as I am, I work, my run business, I do a platform, I'm on here, I'm everywhere, I'm tugging everywhere. But if God say, this is the man I have for you, I'll shut it down. Because see, I, it down. Monday I had to go to Hinesville to my daughter. Uh -huh. I took my jewelry on the road and I did my show from her house. Okay, so, all right, all right. You came to Hinesville and didn't call me? I didn't have time, darling. I promise you, I thought about it, but I, I was in and visit her and I was back. Okay. That's all right, I'm gonna let you slide. Reason. All right, all right. She couldn't come to me, and I had to lay eyes on her. Uh, you understand that? We understand that. All but right, Miss Cassidy. I'm sorry. Go ahead, dog. Go ahead. You just Manson. have to compromise to make it work. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for that, Mr. Anson. How you doing, brother? I'm doing all right. How are y'all doing? Hey, we doing well. We doing well. Come on and tell us what makes a relationship work. Um, I I agree with what everyone has said tonight. Uh, so far about the question and but i think it boils down to one very important thing Talk to everyone, everyone is is an individual everybody have their own needs everybody have their own things that they want and they desire and that's that's life but i think it all boils down to one thing being content with who you with mm. you can always want more you know you, you can always want another woman you know a woman can always want another man but being content with who you with is the key uh -huh. to a relationship in my eyes. Being content with who you're with. All right. All right. We appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Malik, how you doing, brother? Hey, what's going on, First Cub? Hey, man, I'm trying to make it, man, trying to make it. If I had your hand, i cut both of these off and, and put them in a pot of rice and gravy. <laughs> <laughs> OK, all right. Want to talk to me, man. What makes a relationship work? Well, number one, um, comprehension you got to comprehend what the communication that we're discussing okay and after that you have to be willing to be more than just a companion in other words be a partner i'm looking for a partner because you can mm -hmm. do more with a partner than just a companion because uh, you can build you know brainstorm together invest and and real estate houses whatever you know what mm -hmm. i mean furniture uh, and also commit. I, I like uh, what Anson was saying, and I'm going to go with a C word, which is commitment. Once you commit, when you commit it, like you are first cuz, mm -hmm. that's when that's when you're all in. When you that's commit, when you're all in. You're all in. I mean, you can't know, you're throwing your sneakers on the ball while uh, 
Uh, Dr. Feel Good, you throw it on the wire. That's it. I'm finna that's it, Razzle. You know, you know what? You know what? Also, they commit you to right. They commit your ass to a mental institution. <laughs> well, that's true too. But before you go to the mental, uh, you kind of know who you with. Just like uh, First Lady Dr. Fabulous, she appreciated uh, God bless the dead, Mr. Tony, because they communicated. They had that chemistry. They had that wholesomeness. They had that connection. So once you start. Dotting the, you know, dotting the I's and crossing the T's, you know who is for you. We talked about this on a couple of shows before. Mm -hmm. I like when you said it. It don't take long. It don't take you. You'll know within ninety days if this girl is the one for you. Within Absolutely. ninety days, you'll know. Mm -hmm. You'll know. Absolutely. That's the one thing about it, especially from a male perspective. A man know when the woman is right for him. He know. Nobody have to tell him. All right, well, I'm going to jump in. Y'all said 90 days and a man. No. Well, I'm a woman and it take me more than 90 days. Is it something different in our makeup that because we we not I'm not all the way there. Is there any other woman that takes more than 90 days to figure that thing out? Or is it just me? Dr. Fabulous, I think that's just you, but that's unique oh, for you. you. You know, I can't I, get down in three months. Well, uh, I mean, as far as making a decision if you want to be with this person, as far as making a decision, okay, I want to be exclusive with this person. Right. For men, it may not take us 90 days. I've seen situations where men have dated women for five years and never commit to them. But then they right. meet someone within three months, they're ready to marry. Right. They're ready to okay. marry. A man knows when the woman is right for him. Okay. A man knows. And, and it's something that no one can teach him or tell him. It's just something inside of him. That he knows. We had the conversation a couple weeks ago. When you start seeing that man, and this is what made Miss Millie really laugh. She laughed out loud on this one here. When the man is erect, he get himself together because he knows this is the woman for him. He's gonna do things the right way. He's gonna be proper in his actions when it comes to this woman, or if he knows he's gonna be in the presence of this woman. And that don't mean his pants, that means standing up erect, acting that right. That means his, his physical stature. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I think the question is, what do you consider commitment? Because some people think a man is ready to marry when they when they're ready to get to commit. So, I think there's a big confusion there. Well, when I, I was I, speaking on okay. commitment, uh, I was speaking on, like I said, you all in. I mean, in other words, um, it's boundaries. I mean, I, I know I had other friends before I had her, so I got to cut that loose. Or uh, least let, if I don't cut it, least she need to know who I deal with. She didn't, my circle, in other words, she need to know who is down with me before I ever met her. That's going to be that commitment. So ain't no secrets. And see, when you don't have no secrets, you don't have anything to hide, then it's really just straight up coming from the heart. All hearts on the table, in other words. Everything is on the table. I, I got a secret. That. I'm really an alien. I'm <laughs> done with him. <laughs> All right. really an alien. Okay. I ain't from here. I don't All exist. Right, All right, Lil Wayne. Okay. All right, Miss Millie, you got your hand raised? Come on and talk to me. Yeah, um, one thing that Malik said, um, I'm not in agreement with, because I used to do it and I had to learn that. I used to say this thing, if my ex-husband called me, I don't care who I'm with, I'm going to talk to him. I had to learn that he's an ex for a reason. Mm. Yes, we can stay friends. But I can't disrespect my partner and just if he called, oh, hey, what's going on? You okay? Mm -hmm. I can't just do that. Mm -hmm. You have to okay. fall back and let that be in the past. Not saying that I can't speak to him or say hello every now and then, but I can't disrespect my partner when he called. Because yeah. I think Malik said that person have to know that y'all had a bond and you have to um, keep going with that. No, what I you mean, know, that person just have to under kind of understand that if that person called you, it's nothing to it. Mm -hmm. True, but we still have to be respectful enough to respect the person that we are with. Oh, absolutely, I totally agree with that. Doctor Fabulous, got your hand raised. Yes, um, I wanted to ask Miss Miller. She said that the ex was the ex for the reason. Um, so my question is, if you had friends prior to this relationship. Now I understand because I have some diehard friends that I'll take that friendship to the grave. Mm -hmm. But with that being said, my husband is going to know all my male constituents also mm -hmm. that 
they are my friends. So I want my husband to be friends with them because he knows that it was platonic, but I'm still, I'm not going to cut my friends because mm -hmm. I got married or I have mm -hmm. a new boo because yeah. whoever I'm friends with, I want them to, to become have intertwined. a friendship with my husband. Okay, so, All right. I, I agree with that. What I, I guess what I should have said past partners that's friends now. You got oh, to kind of okay. like fall back and fall away from that. Now, regular friends where you're just platonic, it's okay because you do want your partner to be friends with them as well. Okay. So should I say old partners that you have intertwined with on a okay. sexual Intimacy. level? Okay, Intimacy. Got okay, you. okay. All right, but the question on the table is what makes a relationship work? Uh, I'm going to slide down to Miss LaVita. Miss LaVita, are you on with us? Yeah, we're here. Hey, we're how y'all doing tonight? We're good. All right, all right. Come on and talk to us. What, what makes a relationship work? Well, we joined late, um, but I think transparency. I don't know if anybody said that. Because no I mean, good one. okay, yeah, good. complete transparency. You got to be, you know, bold enough and um, secure enough in, in who you are, your movements to just completely be transparent about everything. You gotta be willing to have those tough conversations and just mm -hmm. be honest. Yeah. Now, Ms. Ms. LaVita, if you don't mind me asking, when you said tough conversations, what are you referring to? It could be anything. It could be about your likes, your dislikes, mm -hmm. because we already know sometimes, you know how those little bitty things can kind of nip away at you mm -hmm. and those little bit things can turn into big things. So my thing is like, just talk about it. Just be open, communicate, mm -hmm. be transparent about how you feel, share your thoughts, your concerns, right. and just grow. I mean, it's all a part of growing toward each other. Absolutely. I totally agree with that a hundred percent. Ms. Chocolate Pearl, how are you this evening? I'm good. How about you? I am wonderful. You look like you're really comfortable right now. I am. That's what I'm, I'm talking about. 50, but yeah. That that's what I'm talking about. Back home, she's on, but um, she went back home. So okay. Today. Okay. Okay. Well, come on, tell us what what do you think makes a relationship work? The three C's. Three C's. Yep. Oh, I I know what that is. I know what that is. Cadillac, catfish, and and <laughs> cooking and cleaning all. <laughs> and collard greens. <laughs> and collard greens. There you go. <laughs> Is that it? Well, compromise, communication, and common sense. All right. Say that one more time, please. Compromise. Compromise, communication, and common sense. Okay. All right. Like compromise it. for some things when you have a relationship. Mm -hmm. you know, have your way of doing things, and they may have their way of doing the things, but y'all need to see together if what can come together as a whole. Then okay. you have communication. You got to talk about it. A lot of people do not like communicating with their partners. Mm -hmm. They just think that, hey, I got you. I ain't got to talk to you. No, you need to communicate you need to, to coincide together. Mm -hmm. And the third one is some common sense. You need to have some common sense in your head because if you do some stuff that's just crazy and expect for that person to like it, or to accept it, it's crazy to me. But it could be kind of crazy. Yeah, you have a lot of people who actually don't think about their partner in certain aspects of life and in certain aspects of their relationship and certain aspects of their finances. You have to have some common sense about everything that you do when you do it together. All right. All right. Thank you so much for that. Answer, you got your hand raised. Come on and talk to me. Yeah, I have, I have a hand raised because I, I have to slightly disagree uh -oh. with what you just said. Um, because common sense ain't so common. You know, what one person might think is common, common sense might be left field. You know, okay. so you have some people that think that I don't know the scenario. One of my exes, when we were together. She said we should have a body paint party with our friends. I thought that was the most asinine thing I ever heard. So why do I want to see my friends basically naked? And why do I want them to see me naked? And why do I want them to see you naked? So that 
as far as her example was a lack mm -hmm. of common sense. Hmm. Oh, maybe maybe she was maybe she was testing the boundaries to see what you might be into. Maybe she's mm. trying to expose you to some something new, a different, or something that could be exciting that could spice up the relationship. Either way, that <laughs> common sense <laughs> was not there in 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 the in the relationship between me and her. Okay. We, we, the idea wasn't wasn't common. Okay. It wasn't so it wasn't common mean. sense in my eyes. But that's why I said you have to be content with who you with and those things that come along because you're not going to agree with any one person in life all the time. Not all the so time. You you're absolutely right. You have to be content with who you with and be able to work things out. Some things you can't work out. I, I agree correct. with you, Anson. Um, a lot of times, if you agree with every, if you agree with your person on everything, something's wrong. Right. I really believe that because you you could be in sync, but that doesn't mean you agree on everything. Exactly. I might like waffles, and she might like pancakes, but mm -hmm. that should that shouldn't be a that shouldn't be a so showstopper. Now, if I like having relationships with animals, and she don't, that is a showstopper. You said you're, you're an alien. alien. Did you say relationship <laughs> with animals? <laughs> did he say that? Yes, did I did. That? Yes, I did. But I, I you know, but I, I was just saying that. You know, we're not going to agree on 100% of everything. Well, hell, you know, I hope not to agree on that. You're talking about relationship with animals. He said he's I, an I alien. <laughs> I don't know what the heck going on, but that's what, <laughs> what I'm saying. That was some deep that jump. There, there are things that y'all could agree to disagree on, and there's some non-negotiables. A lot of times, we don't talk about the non-negotiables. Okay. We get hung up on the things we agree to disagree with. Like I don't like pancakes and you like pancakes. Yeah. Yeah. We hey, let's just keep it at breakfast food. When you start talking about with animals and all this <laughs> other stuff. Aliens do up. that kind of stuff. He said he's an alien. Well, hey, we're gonna go ahead and slide down. <laughs> Is it Miss Birdie? Miss Birdie. Yes. How are you this evening? I'm all right. How are you? All right. Is this your first time on? It is. Where are you calling in from? Augusta. Augusta, yes. Georgia. Is that the home of James Brown? Yes. That's what I hear. That's what you hear? All right, Miss <laughs> Birdie, come on, tell us, how, uh, what is it? what does it take to make a relationship work? I have no idea. I'm single, never married. So, okay, just because you're never married, I mean, never had a relationship either? Yeah. Okay, okay. But obviously I'll it didn't work if I'm still single. <laughs> well, that is, that is very true. Okay, well, you got to live and learn. Excellent point. Okay, okay, okay. Well, Ms. Birdie, this is the beauty of this show, Upscale Love for You. We do have some single men that are on the show, so hopefully someone may say something that might spark your interest. If you're interested in anyone on the show, we have a chat box right at the bottom. Just type in my nice little message. Everybody's name is listed on the screen. All right, we have, uh, is it Tracy D? Are you with us? Yes, sir. I was like double muted. How are you? I'm I'm well. How are you? I am fantastic. Fantastic. Miss <laughs> Tracy, where are you calling in from? Uh, Bristol, Virginia. Oh, Virginia, right. VA. Okay. Who invited you to the show? Dr. Feelgood. <laughs> Dr. Feelgood, my man, my brother from another mother. All right. Dr. Tracy, Dr. Feelgood is doing the doggone thing. In your opinion, what makes a relationship work? So I was married for 26 years and we just got divorced last year. So I think this topic is right up my alley. All right. All right. <laughs> but before I answer that, I, it, it, I don't know if I'm mispronouncing your name, Anson. Um, an, is it Anson? No, that's I, correct. Okay, you there we go. So if you could elaborate. Try, I commend you. I'm sorry? They say you correct on the first try. I have to commend you. Boom. Okay. So, so <laughs> your points, if you could elaborate on it, because I don't want to say I fully disagree, but as I'm interpreting it, I, I kind of disagree. So um, when you say you just have to be content with a person that you're with, sometimes when you're content, that, that implies that you're complacent, right? So if I was dating, let's say Dr. Feelgood, and I was just content with who he was, would that kind of not help me push him to reach his full potential. I just kind of to elaborate on where you're going with someone being content and that sort of being the end all. And then I can answer the relationship question. 
Uh, what I mean by being content with who you with is you have to accept them person for who they are. You can't try to be with someone to change them. You have to be with them for who they are. So like like uh, Malik said earlier, uh, a man take a man can know within ninety days. Mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that that she she's gonna be everything he wants. That means that he knows that he can work with her. You know, and and being content with who you is, you have to take it for better or worse. You know, everything can't be fairy tale and what everything every, every can't get everything can't be based off of what you want. And I think that's where a lot of people get confused with relationships. Gotcha. So if, if I now I'm now I'm jumping around dating different people, but if I dated you and I was content with what you brought to the table, I would still want to push you as a woman to reach a higher level. So you're not implying that be content and sort of be complacent and just kind of accept you who you are and don't push you to reach higher limits. You're, you're not going there. Are you? No, that was no, no, I'm not. I'm not talking about that. What, what, okay. he's talk, he, what he's talking about is someone being satisfied with what you got. If I choose you, I choose you. I don't choose uh, Sally and, 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 and Isabel. I choose you. And he's content with making you be the best that you can be. Then y'all going to make him be the best. Everybody, and once y'all content, all that's going to come. Everything that you say is going to come naturally. Right. So what I look like is me and you together, and then next week I want to be with Miss Millie. Right. Like, all of a sudden we had a, a, a couple of a, a bad weekend, and right. now because we had a bad weekend, I want to move on to somebody else and try it again. Right. Gotcha. Like, so, that's what I mean by being content with who you with. Okay. All right, gotcha. right Miss Tracy, did that answer your question? It did, yes. Yeah. Okay, now you wanted to um, respond to the question? Yes, yes. So I'm going to still, and I love that Levita, because I wrote down transparency as well, and you, you did a, a great job in explaining that. But I also wrote down um, communication. Uh, the one mm -hmm. that a lot of people miss is accountability, and not only holding your partner accountable, but also holding yourself accountable, meaning if you're doing something wrong or you're exhibiting behaviors that are you know, counterproductive to your relationship, hold yourself accountable. And that's not just reactive by accepting blame, but do something to prevent it from happening in the, in the future. So I have accountability. And then I also put um, trial and error, which is why I was asking um, Anson those questions, because a lot of times we're content with, with people and, and we kind of put ourselves in a box versus growing and learning new things together. And I think first, cause I'm just reading off the screen. Uh -huh. You had maybe somebody wants to, um, uh, you know, uh, help you experience different things, you know, maybe that you, you know, aren't used to experiencing. And so that's what I meant by trial and area, era, mm -hmm. just really opening new doors for each other and, and, and trying new things because people have become complacent, um, thinking they don't have to continue to work on relationships. And then that girl or guy goes to someone else that is actively um, involved in getting them together. So I, th those are the ones that I put um, as far as All right, All right Ms. Tracy, I got a question for you. Do you know the name of this show? I did. He, uh, Dr. Philgood told me the, the, the name of it. He sent me a flyer. So uh -huh. it's called, the name of the show is Upscale Love for You. Okay. Anson is single. So we're going to go ahead and move on. So, <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Andrea, you got your hand raised. Come on. Talk to me. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Thank you. Ms. Andrea, you got your hand raised. How are you doing tonight? I'm good. Um, All right. Thinking of the question, I'm going back to Anson to who with the content. I just think <laughs> it's it's probably just not a good word choice. I don't I don't see content fitting into making a relationship work because I feel like kind of like Tracy was saying, it needs to be dynamic. People have to be growing and willing to grow and learn. Mm -hmm. And I think when just even the choice of the word being content mm -hmm. just rubs me wrong because I feel like there's so many relationships that look like they're working mm -hmm. where yeah. you're right. And you were in a relationship for a long time and you're maybe content, but it's really not working. So I think um, the ability to be dynamic, to realize that 
you're going to have to be willing to grow and change because we're not static. Human beings are always changing. We're always evolving. Right. The me you meet today cannot be the same me you meet 90 days from now. So it's interesting that 90 days is what you guys were saying it takes. And I don't know because I don't put I don't want to put time limits on anything. So I have no real idea. But I think all of the things that um, the transparency, the communication piece, I think, but the willingness to be dynamic and the willingness to change for someone, I guess, can show your commitment because you have to be willing to realize it's like a give and take. And absolutely, that's, I think, what can make it work. I think there's too many relationships that are together for a long time where people are just content. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, from the outside looking, in it looks like it's working but is it really really working for both people or are they just content so i don't or that's really say are they just settling oh right or are they just settling exactly oh, right. okay. but, I think, right. but i but i think i think in i think in each relationship at some point we settle mm-hmm. i think that's something i think that's why we have so many folks that get a divorce or break up mm-hmm. you know so quickly because you feel like you're settling for a period of time and mm-hmm. really marriage and relationships are for the longevity not necessarily mm-hmm. for the for the feeling for today and so mm-hmm. settling is is you have to be careful i think when we start talking about settling on things because you know there are situations where you do settle and you have to walk away because it's just not for you right yeah. but there are other situations where you're settling for a season and that turns mm-hmm. into someone freaking out and 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 stepping away from a situation that could have been worked out a season and a reason okay yeah all right yeah. Ms. Uh, Dr. Fabulous, you had your hand raised then you took it down are, you, is your, are your hand still up or it's up i hit the button by mistake for it coming down but okay. i think that when we say and i'm i'm going back to ants and also contentment i think in the olden days like my parents or whatever because i thought this was the craziest thing when my mom said this she said when she met my dad she really didn't love him but they got married and she grew to love him Mm. it was like what the bang shangalang was that she said i knew he was a hard worker i knew he was good looking and Mm. she said i knew he was a good man but I didn't love him when I first married him, but I grew to love him. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm listening to what Anson said, and I'm thinking maybe that's what was going on back in the hey, hey day with the contentment and right. staying on a journey. Mm-hmm. You know, I think they did that back in the day, but in 2022, I don't know if we just do that to be doing it now. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dr. Hmm. Yeah, okay. That's a good call out. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Zakaya, you have your hand raised? Um, yes, I have my hand raised. Um, is this, wait, wait, is this your first time on the show, Mrs. Zakaya? No, no, You've I've been, been on the show a couple of times. Yeah. Okay. You okay. Well, okay. Yeah. You <laughs> <shower? room>. okay. <laughs> thank okay. you. Some shower? Shower? Okay. All right. Well, thank awesome. you for coming back on. Come on and talk to us. The must, uh-huh. the musty meal. <laughs> that's what I that's, that's what I was just thinking, Anson. Anson, oh, that's what I was just thinking. I was like, the word is musty. The word is musty. <laughs> hey, we're not gonna bring up old Lord stuff. God. We're not gonna bring up hey, doggy memory. Just joggy memory. I got so. you now. I got <laughs> For those of you who don't know what we're talking about, we had an episode <laughs> we were talking about what the turn off turn on for a, a person, and Mrs. Akai came on and she let us know that her last few boyfriends they had a an older problem yeah and that that actual conversation took over the entire show and mm-hmm. everybody was beating up on i said well we're not going to do that to her we're not going to do that to her because she opened up to us so we thank you for coming back and coming on the show again so come on and talk to thank us tonight. um to me um i feel like it's consistency and communication okay um with me because like right now I'm in a long distance relationship with a guy. We've been together for maybe 10 years. 10? 10. 10 okay. years. Um, oh, 
He's oh, very. Oh, so you've been dating him since she was ten. <laughs> no, 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 no. We've been in a long distance relationship for ten years. I met him when I was in what high school? Elementary. You don't no. look like twenty one. No. No, not, not elementary. Let her get it out. Let her get it out. Like my eighth grade year going into my ninth grade year is when I met him. And we've been okay. talking okay. since ever since. Okay. Um, okay. And the reason why I say those two is because he's not consistent. Like he can go maybe like weeks, days without talking to me. Um, and it's like, to me as, as your girlfriend, I don't understand why, you know, if, if you're not going to be in a committed relationship mm -hmm. with someone, there should be no reason why you could put someone through that, making them, you know, not talking to them on the regular. Okay. Okay. Um, well, well, Mrs. Akai, let me ask this question and I'm not trying to be mm -hmm. funny or sarcastic or anything. Mm -hmm. If you say you're in a 10 year long distance relationship, mm -hmm. does this guy know that he's in a relationship with you? He said he does, but it's like he said he he does, but to me, I don't I don't think so. Okay. I, well, this is this is what I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask uh Dr. Fabulous. Can you give Mrs. Akaya your phone number? Or Miss Millie? Get, she can, can get one it from of y'all message Zakaya and y'all exchange phone numbers. Okay. Then at some point in time, can y'all communicate? We mm -hmm. will, because like okay. you said, this is called upscale love for you. My number is in the chat box, Zakaya. Okay. Uh -huh. And I'm definitely, definitely, that app is coming out real soon, Zakaya. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take you, I'm gonna take you where you need to go. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right. All right. We're gonna we're gonna, anyway. Zakaya, we're gonna have these ladies give you a call and have and yeah, they're gonna have they're gonna have a three-way grown woman conversation. I'm gonna take my hand down. Yes. Okay. All right. Anson, I see you got your hand raised real quick. Yeah, I was I, I raised my hand because of the whole uh, settlement comment. And I, I'm, I don't know if y'all remember, but I said this when I first got on to Upscale Love, mm -hmm. is that what is the problem with the word settle? And a lot of women have a problem with the word settle. Just like the, the, the word content, it was a, a little problem with that tonight. But words are words. They all mm -hmm. have different meanings. And when I, I don't see anything wrong with settling if you choose to settle, just like there's nothing wrong with being content with who you're with. Right. That's the point that I want to make right. is that okay. it's nothing, it doesn't have to be negative. Right. Okay. Don't, don't look at it as negative. Look at it as being, well, this is my decision. This is what I choose to do. But like too that. many people, too many women take the word settle as a negative word. If you're selling, whether it's good or bad, you're still selling. Okay. At the end of the day. All right. Well, we're going to give Miss Tracy an opportunity to respond to Mr. Anson. And then after we hear from Miss Tracy, we're going to go ahead and turn the mic over to Dr. Fabulous. First, if I could, for um, is it her? I don't. Where did her face go? I think it was the Kia. I don't want to. I can't see her her um image anymore. But um, I think when you we talk about uh, being consistent, I think for women, at least I can speak for myself, it's the energy being consistent. So like the the way you are in that relationship, whether or not you're showing energy um in terms of the way that you you act around us, but whether or not you're showing us attention whether or not you still look hungry for us. So I think when we look, when uh, I'll speak for myself, when I'm with a, a guy, if he's not showing consistent energy, that's a turnoff for me. So I, I think the consistency for me goes with the energy. And Anson, 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 your word choice. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I love it because I love um, thought simulators and, and that's you know what this is about. And so settle is a verb, number one. So when we say words don't matter, they, they, they do. Um, at a point in, in, in time, so in my marriage that clearly ended last year, um, I did settle for a while for my children, but settle is not a closure verb. You shouldn't just settle and just to settle. If there's a moment of time where you have to take the milestone or, or you know, that you reached, just 
you shouldn't forget your ultimate or your desired outcome. So if I'm settling, I'll just use my ex-husband. If I stayed with him for two years extra, you know, past our separation for the kids, I'm not going to say that I'm just going to settle, you know, forever. So I think it has a time limit. It's human though to settle because I think someone else said it, everyone settles, but there, there is a negative connotation to settling when you're not using it the right, the right way. Um, and content to me, and it's really complacency. And I think even with my marriage, marriage is active. Relationships are active. If you're not actively working on that, giving the relationship that energy and you're just content, I just think it, for me, it look, like it, it goes sour because you're not actively giving your relationship the energy that it needs. Um, you, like, like consistently dating is an energy you give to a relationship. If you're not consistently <laughs> Oh,